Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Cube from the New York Stock Exchange office in San Francisco. We're covering Dreamforce 2024. Uh, we are talking to customers, Salesforce folks, as well as uh, some partners in the ecosystem. So uh, my name is Christophe Bertrand. I'm a principal analyst at theCUBE, and I'd like to uh, welcome Matt Gorniak, who is the CEO of 3Kit. Welcome. Thank you, and thanks for having me. It's great to meet. Perfect. So Matt, uh, tell us about yourself and tell us about 3Kit. Yeah, um, so 3Kit's visual commerce platform, and you know, we started the company about six and a half years ago. Uh, prior to that, we started and build two vendors that were sales tools, if you will. And we had this thought, you know what's missing is the whole customer experience, the whole product experience. That was sort of the thesis, the genesis, that one day in the future, uh, what's gonna be really important is digitally to be able to, essentially when you buy products, to be inspired, to be able to explore, and it's all gonna happen online. So that was kind of the thesis behind it. It's coming true, which is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of sort of the, the story behind 3Kit. I'm the CEO and yeah, and uh, that's what we do. So let's talk about your customer base, uh, six and a half years. How many customers do you have? Where are they? Who are they? I've heard a couple of big names. Yeah, 150 customers, uh, they're leading global brands. And what's fascinating is it started pretty much in luxury. Um, luxury is a really fascinating segment. I would encourage anyone who really hasn't looked into it, it's amazingly digital forward. I'll leave it at that, so have fun exploring that. And there it's about always taking the, like how do you capture the essence, the spirit of a brand? These are big words, but they're very real. What does that mean? How do you bring product experiences to the customer? Then we add buzzwords here called omni-channel, but it's very real to a buyer. Like you're walking down Champs-Élysées, which maybe in Paris mm -hmm. you did. How do you, so this is like, this is, would be the traditional experience. Um, and then how you do this digitally is the setup, but you walk down the um, the storefront, how do you see something that inspires you? How do you engage in the store? How do you explore? How do you you know get sort of um, really interested? And then obviously how do you then really put some together and then you know um, buy a product, but also much more than that. You buy confidence, you buy feelings, right? And amazing products. Having said that, you do that digitally. And now what we see is, so back to your question, it started with luxury, and now two thirds of our business are manufacturers. Uh, you think of building materials, you think of sinks and faucets, you think of um, high-end cabinets, um, te technology, by the way, gaming systems. How do you um, allow the customer digitally to have that same feeling, right? Uh, because traditionally, I think brands and manufacturers out outside of luxury looked at products of something you make, and you kind of offer it. And that's kind of, that, that time has changed, right? Like I offer you stuff that was cool 20 years ago digitally, now it's about engage me. Is that, is that, uh, it um, makes perfect sense, and I think we're seeing some similar trends actually in, in business to business, um, not just in B2C or B2B2C. Uh, so it's quite a, a distance between a designer dress and <laughs> <laughs> and a faucet, <laughs> but yeah. let's talk about some of the mechanics behind this because I, I see what you're you're doing. You're creating, recreating the physical experience in digital. Uh, but in order to do that, there's a whole uh, supply chain that happens. Uh, how do you engage in the context of Dreamforce with Salesforce? Uh, other specific integrations, APIs that uh, we should know about, and how does that all yeah. work for the manufacturer, for the client? What do they um, uh, get from you in order to be able to achieve what you've just described? Yeah, no, thank you for that. I think what's really exciting is two things at, at Dreamforce this year. I mean, main things. One is Agent Force, which I think is going to be very interesting to power, you know, really give the customer what they want, powered by all this data that most companies already have. So that's number one. Number two, is Revenue Cloud um, Accelerate, or Advanced, I should say. So part of um, our specific integration is Salesforce is decomposing some of their products, meaning they're making that data easier available, like configuration, pricing data, uh, quoting. And that sounds kind of, um, you know, that's tech stuff, but it's powerful because when you talk about a customer experience, customer journey, let's talk again about digitally, right? Um, you can now take that data from Salesforce and use it across the journey without having to recreate the wheel. So let me give you an example. Doors, windows, just let's go there, right? Cabinets, closets. I'm going to something everyone can understand. Um, 
online, you use some configuration data, some pricing data. Then, but where with Rika comes, you can experience the product, right? You can really uh, feel like you're buying it, um, get really into it. But then it goes maybe f- from from that experience to a quoting uh, um, um, scenario, whereby let's say uh, a cabinet, you're not really into it, but the, the way to buy it is at the dealership. So why would you have to recreate the application all over again at the dealership? Why not reuse, that's the composability and the headlessness that both of our systems bring to the table, maybe most of what's online, but you have to add or can add additional data that's very useful for the sales rep or maybe not available to the customer, like discounts or whatnot. And and you can basically create infinite amount of um, buying journeys. And by the way, as a consumer, that's what we want. We want a certain buying journey online, at the store, the dealership engages with us. Because what happens is as a buyer, I'm kind of like, I want the brand to kind of give me and like follow my journey. So where this becomes interesting again is from a data model side, it allows us to reuse that data across the journey. So Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and it's, uh, I guess also you talked about agentic AI here, but AI is going to be a big, yep. big deal, is a big deal already. And I'm, I'm very sure it's, uh, it's going to be part of your, um, the conversation here. So uh, let's double click a little bit uh, on the Salesforce components here. Yep. So uh, who is your, your buyer? Is it the Salesforce um, admin? Is it the actual um, marketing uh, lead uh, for the company in question? Um, is it the chief revenue officer? Who's who's your buyer? And uh, walk me through the integration piece because I think that's that's yeah. very interesting here to to really convert data from Salesforce into an experience and back, which is really the thing. It's a two way street here. Uh, absolutely, and I'd say um, it's been really fascinating because from a three kit perspective, the buyer has been yes, sometimes the CRO, CMO, or who, who runs digital, but a lot of times now it's been executives because. Um, what we found is that for the very first time, we're actually speaking about the products that pay the bills, which is their products. So it's about, you know, engaging the customers with their products just in the right way. So these systems, like 3 kit is not just a system, it's literally helping you help. And actually the way to phrase it is, we actually are very much buyer centric. It's a system that people buy to sell more, okay? We're not confused about that. Um, but it's about the buyer wanting to buy. We fundamentally started the company believing six years ago that selling is over. It's all about buying. And so when you have that mindset, how you architect it, how you have the experiences, that is really pivotal, if that makes sense. Because the buyer kind of doesn't want to get sold anymore. So that's kind of three kids. So, so what I'm saying is now, you ask who's buying it, is executives right now, we can discuss the economy. I'm not an economy expert but things may be slowing down a bit. And now it's the question, what do we do now? What do we do differently? And the next frontier, what we see is the product itself, the experience. And then back to the integration, didn't lose that, is, uh, mm-hmm. is basically the ability to pull that data out of Salesforce across that journey without having to reduplicate it. That's really powerful. So that must convert into additional sales. Obviously, what I like very much is your your, your buyer centric. So that makes perfect sense. So you're sort of backing into uh, the uh, sort of Salesforce data by first starting with the buyer, Correct. Uh, which is very interesting. I think you're right. We maybe have or tended to be thinking the other way around. How do I sell? Well, this is really how do I buy? So I get that part. Now let's let's go back to the back and forth with the data. Clearly, you're enriching the existing data set when somebody starts interacting. Um, yep. I mean, you mentioned uh, configuring a cabinet or I mean, I can think of a car. Everybody's bought a car and change the colors and add this and add that, right? Same general idea. So how would you say, what type of improvements have you heard your customers report? I, maybe you can't share exact numbers, but I would love to get some some actual examples. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, the, the first one is, um, you talk about the integration or just the outcome? The outcome and then, and yeah. but, you know, if you could put this in the context of the integration, of course. I, mean, I think it's going to be this back and forth. Integration is all assumed, and then we should talk right. about agent force and AI as well. Absolutely. Because, because I do believe, no, it, we're seeing huge, huge, uh, we're applying it. We're very much into applying that. But let me tell you this. So let's talk about um, B2B or uh, products that are 
um, we focus on high value, high complex. N- not luxury, what I'm saying, but right. again, things, you, you know, like in this room, chairs and, and table, this is not a t-shirt you're buying, okay? Right. Multiple products, there's a consideration of configuration, uh, multiple products together, the style, there's materials, right. uh, all that, all right? So let's start with lead generation. That sounds like a very basic word. How do you generate a lead when you have a complex product? So again, think of manufacturing um, online. Uh, there's a lot of studies, including ours, which is essentially this. Most manufacturers put some pictures up, mm-hmm. and the resistance to click the contact sales button is tremendous. We've done studies ourselves where the B2B buyer, I'm thinking what I just told you, could be forklifts, could be conference room equipment, right. okay? This is who we cover, mm-hmm. customers of ours. They will go through in incredible amounts of pain to find it on themselves online before they contact the seller. Mm-hmm. So what you have to do is you have to do a visual configuration, you have to do a visual solutioning, visual experience online to give you a sense of I have something that will solve your problem and now talk to my seller. Naturally, you could buy it online as well, so we do this a lot, but let's say you don't because business reasons, that's the new way. So then what happens is now that you are a high quality lead, the next step is, well, someone has to help you transact it, maybe the store, maybe it's a right. dealership. Right. Um, And so the the question back to the integration is, how do you carry that experience to the next channel? Today, these are different applications. It's as a buyer, like what happened? I had this wonderful experience here. Now I go to this partner or your sales team and it feels very different, very jarring. So that's, so by the way, you you get higher quality leads. People tend to buy more because they wanna buy more. They're here to solve a problem. So the average Mm -hmm. transaction goes up and people buy faster. Because in essence, you're taking the risk out. There's these hurdles across the buying process. Some things could be very, very simple that just stop it in the process. And by the way, that's not just online, that's also the sales team. By the way, let me talk about sales teams for a second. A lot of sales teams right now, they are struggling with information. They're just as confused as the buyer, many products. So their ability to explain and show kind of like almost let it by itself. Mm -hmm. That's So that's kind of the arc, but those are three, higher quality leads, higher average basket of goods, and faster transactions. Yeah, and that's a big deal because essentially you've hit uh, fundamentally what what drives uh, a business, which is margin and sales. So top line and bottom line. Uh, so clearly uh, the next uh, com- combination of technologies uh, will be agents. Uh, and Before AI we go agents, there, but yeah. just to make it very simple is, let's see this room, you want a conference room equipment, and let's see it's really important for our interview, what you want, you have a budget, I wanna see this room, I wanna see a table, show me the equipment, right. I see, I experience it, I wanna buy right now. It's honestly that simple, it's hard to do. Well, Does that make sense? Versus like looking at some pictures of the brand and talking to a sales rep, you know what you want already. Anyway, sorry, back to the agents. Well, I would say, is it hard to do? I don't know if it's hard to do, but it's hard to translate into something that carries through the whole life cycle. Right. I think that's really the trick Agreed. here. That's really the trick. Uh, because the visual render is, I think we've we've had for many years. But you're right. Can I click it and then, as a distributor, do I get this information, or do I have to do I have to put you through the whole configuration again? At which point, I'll probably lose you as a potential client. Voila. Uh, so that makes perfect sense to me. But I want to go back to AI. Let's yeah. talk about AI. I know it's it's hot topic. It's a buzzword. Uh, literally, I think Mark Benioff said we should have called this edition uh, Agent Force. Yeah. Um, so. Um, what are you doing with the agents? What's your take on agent force? How are you gonna use the agents and what are you already doing today? Yeah, I think it's very powerful. I mean, we have uh, started building our AI uh, product, uh, visual discovery, and visual commerce AI, starting last year already. For us, it was very clear that you as a consumer, as a buyer, I'm using both, so mm-hmm. direct consumer or buyer of B2B, you want the best sales rep helping you out across the whole journey. And that sounds kind of like very hokey, but the reality is online, in store, you want, ideally that, you know, you have a thousand reps, there's there's a small portion who are just amazing, they know everything, they know, but, but now with visual uh, um, commerce, you have the whole product at your uh, disposal. They can ask you questions and kind of get you what makes sense for you, the budget and availability. And that's what AI is the promise that we're delivering today. So, when you're online and you're just like, hey, I'm trying to figure out for this conference room, what should I think about? It's 
not about lots of questions, about very quickly getting you to something that makes sense, including in the store. So, and why AI is so powerful is that the training is, and the setup is so much easier than if you had to declare all that, you know, in the context it knows. What's really incredible for us with Agent Force is that we can tap into Salesforce and leverage that agent that has a much broader context of the customer, all these interactions, right. much broader, which makes that experience even richer, right? So we, we uh, envision have built um, our product that it basically engages with, with that agent um, and becomes like a specialized product visual commerce agent. It makes perfect sense. Uh, and I like the broader context because clearly there's a, another aspect, which is I don't want to be a customer. I don't want you as a customer just this one time. I want to exactly. create a relationship with you. If you remember what I bought before, maybe we can start from there, et cetera. So, so there's a whole idea behind this. And that in probably, that's another metric. Uh, the lifetime value of a customer probably increases with this because you keep them for longer and they buy more. Um, this is great technology. I know we didn't go too much into the details technically. There will be plenty of time at Dreamforce to do that. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, it was great uh, talking to you and discovering uh, this great integration. Uh, and to our viewers, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're covering Dreamforce 2024. My name is Christophe Bertrand. I'm a principal analyst here at the Cube Research, and we'll talk to you on the next one.